All right, guys, let's talk about food photography this week. Um, I am personally super excited for this one. Um, I cannot wait to bring this lesson back to the classroom for my photography two students um, next year, hopefully, where I can really go into more detail about shooting food photography. So we're talking about food. Um, this video is from 99% Invisible. I don't know if you guys know that that's actually a podcast. Um, and this talks all about um, kind of food photography and like why why it's so such a big deal. Um, kind of some of the things that go into making food photography. So you guys are going to want to open up the original slides presentation that I'm going to post in Google Classroom. And you're going to want to view this video, at least skip through some of it to see some of the um, to see some of the stuff they're talking about and why um, taking appealing photos of food is so important for advertising. So um, obviously you guys don't have a lot of context with this video. Um, go ahead and open up the slides presentation and view that one on your own. So um, these three video links here show some interesting hacks and tips that photographers use to photograph food. Um, I don't know if you guys talk about photographing food at all in any of like your foods classes, but there is some crazy witchcraft that goes into actually photographing food. Um, you can see the picture that I chose to drop into this slide shows uh, motor oil being poured over a stack of pancakes. That's a real thing that happens in the, in the industry. Um, so there's three videos here. You aren't expected to use any of these hacks, but they're pretty interesting. So I've included the videos. So five tips for an excellent food photo. I'm gonna talk about these five things that are gonna help make your assignment um, easier and more successful. Choose your angle, surround your hero or your food, lighting is king, use lines and layers, and limit your color scheme. So those are the five things that I'm gonna talk about. <clears throat> so choosing your angle. This is the time to put what you know about composition into action. Worm's eye view, bird's eye view, filling the frame. You should consider all of these things as you're framing your shot. So try different angles to see what's gonna work best for your food. Um, you can shoot straight on, you can shoot directly above your subject, you can shoot at three quarters angle, you can get up close. Um, all of these are good examples of kind of like, okay shots, better shots, and hero shots, so like really good shots. So again, more examples. Um, having lots of options is gonna be good for you. Again, options. Surround your hero. The hero is the focal point of your shot. So what are you, what food are you taking pictures of? Usually this is the most important food item or items in your composition. You bring attention to that hero by surrounding it with a balance of negative space and small props or textures. Obviously you guys are limited to what um, you have available to you in your house, but um, try to surround your hero. So styling your food. Use different backgrounds. And if you guys watch all of the videos that I post in this presentation, you're gonna get some ideas or for some like easy, easy things you can use. Um, different fabrics, different surfaces in your house, um, pans, anything that leaves kind of an interesting texture. Think outside the box a little bit and do a little research if you have to. Incorporate fabrics, plates, cutting boards, silverware, or anything that will create some variety and texture into your photographs. Experiment with different arrangement of your items. Keep the elements of art in mind as well as those rules of composition that we've been talking about all semester. And then ask yourself, what do you want to emphasize? Is it the color, the texture, the shape, the forms, the value, the space? Um, and style your food. So here you can see an example of unstyled meatball subs and styled meatball subs. Clearly one of these looks way more appealing than the other. Okay, there's one that I would choose over the other if I were being presented both options. Lighting is king. You are going to light your ingredient purposely. Even lighting comes from large lights. Um, you guys don't have access to studio lights and I totally understand that, but windows are gonna be your best friend for this assignment. If you don't have large windows, you can use several smaller lights placed around your hero or your focal point. Poor use of lighting could ruin the story you're trying to tell with your images. So um, you guys can see I've been taping my videos in my, my home office. I've got a nice big window. I would just push a table up in front of that window and that would be my source of light. Okay, lots of great natural light here. 
So you should use natural light by a window or go outside even. Um, if the weather allows for it, you could certainly take your shoot outside. Use side lighting coming from the side or back lighting coming from behind the object. So you can see these are two examples of the same plate of food. One is side lit and one is back lit. So the difference um, is in where you place the light. Um, there are great hacks on the internet um, to, <coughs> to create nice even lighting. Um, so by placing your table kind of close to a window using um, spotlights or lamps, um, using a white foam board, some of you might not have access to that, to, so you can see a white cutting board here. Um, just kind of practice with a couple different setups. Again, some more um, interesting setups here. This um, woman on the right is laying her subjects on just a white board in front of a big open window. And on the left, you can see that um, to get creative with a background, this photographer chose just an old baking pan, and that probably made for a really interesting finished photograph. Don't forget that most of your phones allow for exposure, comp exposure compensation. Um, so what that means is typically, and I know this is true with my iPhone, if I hit the center of my frame and drag up or drag down, I can manually adjust the exposure um, by making the picture lighter or darker. It's okay if you're a little underexposed. This can be fixed in the editing process, and I'm going to talk about that in the end of the presentation. Using lines and layers. Consider what elements and principles you can use to enhance the image. Line and emphasis are particularly effective. Also think about how you can layer things. A bowl can be set on top of a plate, cutting board or roasting pan, forks can rest gently on napkins, Create interesting moments here. Kind of think about a story, think about food magazines, um, think about what's appealing in a photograph. So in this example, I've highlighted some lines, some diagonal lines, um, that help kind of direct your eye into this, this dish here. And then lastly is color. By removing distracting or unimportant colors, we make the viewer's experience more focused and pleasurable. So here you can see there's a very specific color scheme. There's whites and uh, reds and blacks and kind of everything in between, but there's not a lot of like extra color that isn't needed in this photograph. So this week, I am also gonna ask you to edit your photographs or at least try your best to do so. So here you can see a before and an after. Um, the before photo is likely what came out of the camera or in this case, you guys are probably using your smartphones and the after photograph has been edited a little bit. You don't need to use any of the apps that are featured in the following video. Um, almost all of this can be done through the editor in your camera roll or that comes on your phone. Um, I know that the iPhone's photo editor is pretty powerful. There are also apps you can use. Um, one of my favorites is Snapseed. Um, I'm not sure if it's free or not. I'm pretty sure it is, but that's one of the photo editing apps that I like to use. So this video will... Um, give you some examples on how to take better photographs with your iPhone. Um, certainly check this one out in the um, original presentation that I'm gonna post on Google Classroom for you. He's gonna give you some tips to take better shots with your iPhone. These are some editing apps that you guys can use. So Adobe Photoshop Express on your phones is a pretty good one. Um, Chromebook, this is an article about how the best Chromebook uh, photo editors that you guys can download, hopefully on your Chromebooks. Now, what is your actual challenge? So the first part of this presentation has been like how to take good photos. Now I'm putting you up to a challenge. I'm giving you three choices. You do not need to do all three of these challenges. You are gonna choose one, okay, choose one. Choose the one that appeals to you the most. So challenge one is a single ingredient portrait. You are going to need to take four photographs that highlight a single food item. Challenge number two is breakfast, lunch, or dinner. You're gonna take four photos, a flat lay, a detail shot, human interest, and artist's choice, and you're gonna make your meal shine. Challenge number three is narratives with food. You're gonna take at least five photos with this one, and you're gonna tell a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end. Okay, so three, choices. This is your cheat sheet if you need to kind of reference back to it to kind of make a decision on what you actually want to want to do for this project. 
I'm assigning this project earlier in the week to give you guys more time to finish this because it's a little bit more involved than what I've asked you guys to do in the past. So challenge number one is the single ingredient portrait, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You're going to highlight a single ingredient or food item. So in these examples, the hero of the photo or the kind of subject is an egg. So how do you want to portray that egg? Lots of different ways. You're going to take four images to convey to the viewer the essential nature of your food item. Now, egg is something that has lots of options. Um, so far, you've seen it whole. You've seen it fried. You've seen it beaten here, ready for um, to be added into something. Um, so think of like what four ways you can highlight your food item. Okay, some more examples. If that sounds a little vague to you, that's fine. This project is open to interpretation and your point of view will be what work apart. So it's okay if it doesn't fit exactly what I've said. Um, just know you need to have four photographs highlighting your single food item. Challenge number two, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Um, this video will um, kind of like talk you through um, some tips for this for this specific challenge. Um, I recommend starting at three minutes and 30 seconds, and I've set this slideshow to do that for you. Um, and it's going to talk about shooting your breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Most of this applies, even though you guys are shooting on your iPhones, so um, or your phones of of choice. Um, so watch this video too if you get a chance. The goal of this assignment is to take the best, most exciting, and delicious photographs of one of your meals today. So if I'm thinking about my meals today, so far I haven't eaten the most interesting things. I had a granola bar for breakfast. I had some prepackaged rice for lunch. I don't eat the healthiest when I'm at home. So, um, and I've got frozen pizza on the menu for dinner. So, um, think about what you are having in the next day or so for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and how you can make that interesting in a photo shoot. It doesn't matter whether you're having just a cup of coffee, peanut butter and jelly, or a three-course dining service. Um, here, this this one makes mac and cheese look look gourmet. Um, and I know I don't buy anything special with my macaroni and cheese. I just make it straight out of the box. So this talks about how to make your um, dishes a little bit more appealing. So you need to take four of them, four photos. One of them needs to be a flat layer, a bird's eye view photo. One photo must be a detail shot. One must have some kind of human interest element. And the final shot is your choice. So bird's eye, detail, human interest shots, and your choice, okay? So some things to consider. Um, your photo is only as good as your lighting, so consider your light sources. Consider the focal point of your shot. Consider the color scheme of your shot. And what props can you use to um, add, the add to the scene or complete the scene? Here are some helpful hints for placement um, as far as utensils go and how to make them look natural and not super awkward. So challenge number three is narratives with food. So telling a story. You're going to tell a story uh, with food, and food clearly tells a story. Otherwise, there would not be so many shows on TV all about food. Um, we haven't talked about it much yet because we haven't had a lot of time in class together, but um, narrative or telling a story is really important in photography. So food photography provides us with a special opportunity to talk about a story. All stories have a beginning, a middle, and end, very much like a recipe. So the beginning looks something like this. The middle might look something like this. And the end hopefully looks something like this, because that looks pretty delicious, and I don't eat vegetables. <laughs> so for this project, you're going to play the part of a food photographer or a food blogger. Your goal is to make a series of five photographs that walk the viewer through the steps of preparing a dish or a meal. Is there something that you or your family makes that you can document? This website um, will take you to a whole bunch of examples of what this might look like for inspiration. So again, each photo should be its own standalone work of art. Time spent, attention to detail, and the decisions you make should be evident in this. Before you begin, take a moment to brainstorm. What is your beginning, middle, and end? So what are the steps? 
Um, this is going to be something that you're probably going to want to choose a recipe for, um, like maybe not a PB and J or like not a, a pop tart that you throw in the toaster. It's going to need to have at least five unique photographs. How might you highlight an ingredient? In what way can you draw attention to the preparation of your food? Will you include any shots of people cooking or eating the finished meal? Um, this might be something really exciting or interesting to do with your family since you've basically been trapped at home with them for the last however many weeks. So again, beginning, the middle, and the end. So your assignment. Um, this is kind of what you need to do before or by Saturday. You're going to choose one of the three challenges. You are going to take the required number of photographs following the suggestions from this presentation. You're going to edit your photos using your photo editing app of your choice. And then in a new slides presentation, you're going to place the photos. And I'm going to skip to the next slide. So your final presentation. This is going to include a title side that it lists which challenge you chose. This is going to help me grade it. So I need to know if you chose challenge one, two, or three. You're going to put your edited photos into the presentation. Don't try to squeeze them all onto one slide. Feel free to spread them out. You can do one or two photos per slide. Answer the following questions on a final slide. Tell me about your photo shoot and why you chose the items or the recipe that you did. And did you have any struggles and what worked well? So that's kind of what I'm asking of you. So by Saturday, I need you to get this taken care of. I am really excited to see the results of this one. Um, so get out there, take lots of pictures, eat lots of food, and don't forget to have fun. Good luck, guys.